Could you describe the two works that you made for CB1 and Aidan Abet and say a little bit about what you were exploring in those projects? Um, yes, uh, although uh, one piece is, is, is really a, a public art project mm -hmm. and engages with the facade of a newly built uh, building, part of CB1, mm -hmm. and uh, the, other, the other work um, was um, much more uh, connected to the space, mm -hmm. connected the space uh, and light of the gallery. Um, yet both of them dealt with a notion, an idea of a wall. In both cases I, I um, deconstructed somehow the, this notion of solidity of the surface by, or subverted maybe would be the, a better word, um, by playing with light and, and using light, uh, the existing light, um, and the changing light conditions. I used um, different uh, methods in uh, both cases, uh, as if one work was inversion of the other, because on on the facade of the um, of the CB1 building there are tiny, well, no, maybe not tiny, but small, <laughs> small, small pieces of glass which are inserted into the mortar of in between the bricks, and they. Uh, catch the light and reflect and refract the light. Also, there is an interesting aspect to it, maybe that they are, those strokes are maybe like brushed strokes, although they are little pieces of float glass just cut. Uh, but the, the, the scale of them in relation to the facade is, is, is that, it's, it's as if they were sort of brush strokes and, and it is a painting with light on a scale of, of an elevation. And then the wall, the, the main um, part of the installation, which was the, the, the main uh, breeze block wall, which I painted with layers of um, paint made with um, mica uh, is, was um, and were the as if brush strokes but again they were not brush strokes but just residues of, of masking tape, little pieces of masking tape. So it was like almost like a negative of the facade of CB1. Well, depending where you were in the room, depending how you position yourself in relation to it, either the little little marks appear darker against whiter background, lighter background, or they became lighter against the darker background, and it's purely to do with the, the amount of light reflected and as if dispersed on that surface. So again, it, it's a kind of um, work in which the light is painting or drawing. The light is the, is the maker of the art. So after training as a painter, what led you to begin working on a large scale and painting on walls, drawing on walls? Um, it slowly happened. I never thought about this. In fact, when I was a student, I was just um, painting. But then I, I was interested in scale. It, it's to do with scale. Somehow I liked working on larger scale 
and it was very, it felt very natural for me. Is that part of what attracts you to making public art, the opportunity to work on the scale and to work with architecture? Yes, yes, this is um, the main attraction for me and it, um, yes, the ability to, to work on really large scale and also the second aspect which interests me very much is uh, more social and political in that uh, I very much believe in uh, Bauhaus um, ideas of, of art uh, which were very socialist ideas of, of art, high art penetrating into the everyday uh, reality of everybody. So, so is it important to make things more beautiful? Yes, I actually believe in beauty. <laughs> what do you never get bored of? I never get bored of um, looking at colour, at light and what it does. And I maybe I answer to you with a, with a quote from Goethe, who said that thinking is more interesting than knowing, but not than looking.